help people, but you give them a hand up, not a hand out. There's a big difference. And we're just not doing that. You, you've got to require people to do everything they can do to help themselves. So they, again, observe themselves doing more and more. And they have pride in what they achieve and what they accomplish. And we've gotten away from that. We're not doing that. But it seems like, especially when you're talking about like the homeless population, you would need so many people to work with those people. Because you're talking about a, a psychological shift, a, a way of viewing the world with, with discipline and accountability that you're, you're not going to just get people to adopt on their own. I mean, very few people will. Mo most people will do the very <clears throat> least that they have to do. And if there's programs and different ways they can acquire money and food, they'll just stay in whatever state they're at. You know, I was watching this video today of a guy who's in Hollywood who built a house on the street. He built a small house. And they were talking to all the people in the neighborhood about it. And they had the cops come and visit him. And they offered to take him to a shelter. And he's like, no, I don't want to go. And they go, okay. And they just leave him there. So this guy's built a structure. <clears throat> on wheels it's like a small shed but a wooden house because he said that every time he had a tent they took the tent away yeah so he just built a house well that's pretty industrious yeah but why can't he apply that to other things right exactly and he and he can but he needs coaching but and, and i don't care how flat you make a pancake it's got two sides and the side where he says i don't want to go to a shelter if you go to a shelter what do you do with all your stuff because there's nowhere inside that shelter to take all of your stuff. And he, and he has things. And he might have an animal. And that animal he's attached to. And you can't take that animal in the shelter. And you can't take your things in the shelter. And if you can't take your animal and your things in the shelter, they're not going to go. And they leave their things on the street. They'll be gone when they come out the next morning. So a shelter's not always the answer. So you got to have empathy for those people. And... He may be trying to do the best he can, but there you, you've got to create alternatives where he says, okay, look, if he's industry enough that he's built a house on wheels and they're pirating electrical, some of them from service poles, yeah, some of them have 10-man tents and they've got flower beds in front of them. Yeah, this guy had plants hanging out in front of his yeah, house. That's pretty industrious. Now, if, if that guy's got that much initiative and he could – use that in other ways find him a place where he can do that where he can not be obstructing traffic not be in front of somebody's business be in an area where he can build that house and maybe he can inspire somebody else to do the same thing and then he can maybe you know it starts to snowball you work with what you have i'm not saying these people can start running their own business tomorrow but build on what you have uh, but you don't just say well you know, so he's what they refer to as experiencing homelessness. Find something that you can build on. These people don't want to be homeless. They want to have a better standard of living. But once they become homeless, it's like, you know, inertia is the tendency for bodies at rest to stay at rest. And it's hard to get them moving. But you say there's, it would take so many. You can find leaders within those groups that can help the next level below and they can be helped by the next level above there are ways out of that but it seems like one of the first things that has to happen is you can't tolerate people just camping on the streets just like you can't tolerate people littering because it's it's not much difference you're you're interfering with all the other people that are following society's rules and society's rules are there to preserve everybody and keep the world cleaner and a better place so as soon as you allow someone to violate those rules because they're down and out, and then you have more, and then they compound, and then you have thousands of tents. Now you have a problem that's almost insurmountable, and then you have a whole industry that's based around that problem because you have hundreds of people that work for the city that get paid six-figure salaries, and they're not fixing anything. They get paid for the homeless crisis, and some of them are making a quarter million dollars a year. We looked it up. It's wild. The budget goes up every year. The problem doesn't go away. There's no incentive to fix the problem because if the problem gets fixed, then those jobs go away. Of course it does. The, the jobs go away. But those jobs can become different jobs if somebody holds them accountable. And so you can go in and 
just wipe all the tents off the street, but where are those people going to go? Right. Well, in Austin, they moved them into hotels. They bought hotels, they moved them into hotels, and they had it set up where you have to be clean to go into these places. And they offered them counseling. Well, but Austin's a smaller place. You know, there's only a million people in this city. And, you know, I talked to the mayor about it before they fixed the problem, and it was his number one initiative. He's like, he goes, before I leave office, I have to fix this. And he goes, and I think we can because there's only about 2,000 homeless people. He goes, when you get to the place where L.A. is, where you're dealing with like 100,000 homeless people, it's almost impossible. He goes, but right now we're like at the tipping point and we can fix it. But it is kind of fixed. There's still some homeless people, but if you go around Austin, you don't see the tents here that you see in L.A. Well, is that out of sight, out of mind, or is somebody going to those people in the hotels and trying to get them to be self-sufficient? I mean, you can hide the problem or you can fix the problem, and you've got to find a way to fix the problem. You've got to get these people doing everything they can do to become self-sufficient. I mean, that's the dignity they're looking for, and we're not helping them to do it <clears throat> if we're just taking them out of sight. But don't you think it's a, a, there's a massive amount of energy and effort that has to be taken for each individual to change the way they view the world, to acquire discipline, to acquire initiative, to clean their act up, to stop doing meth and heroin and and try to get their life to a place where they're living a meaningful rewarding life i mean how many people struggle with that on a daily basis you, you need coaching and counseling and you need slow incremental steps towards acquiring a self-sufficient mentality that's a very very difficult thing to get people to accept en masse it is and the problem that i see with the approach to it now is the exit ramps out of that life are not aggressively enough. They're not being pursued aggressively enough. It's just like, all right, what are we going to do with these people today? Let's put them in uh, a camping area. Let's put them in a hotel. Let's, you know, it's, let, let's get them off the street or let's get rid of the rules that say they can't camp. Well, okay. That's just warehousing. What are you doing to help this person become self-sufficient? Are you finding them a job? Are you creating a contingency where if they do A, they get B. If they do B, they get C. Uh, 